Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. You don't normally see a bucket of water in a shop, much less my shop or any shop, really, but um, that's what we got today. And what's in there is a blank of Madrone Burl. Not a lot of Burl, but I'll explain what's going on here. I ran into some really nice guys, uh, Northwood Figured Wood, and they sell some amazing looking wood. When we are talking on the phone, I actually found out that they have Madrone. Now, Madrone is a beautiful wood, that comes from up north, away from Oklahoma, and we never get to turn it here because it has a tendency that once you've cut it green, if you don't turn it very, very soon, it's going to crack. So you can't ship it, you can't do anything with it. You can put it all in wax and still ship it here and it's going to crack. It just moves that much. Okay, well, it's that much of a trouble, why do you want to turn it? Because one, it's a beautiful piece of wood. When you get the burl, it's amazing. But the other thing is, is you can turn this wood really thin and then it does a more incredible thing. It will warp and just become kind of this weird shape, almost like a, I don't know, chrysanthemum or whatever shape you can imagine. The more burl it has, the more it does. Now, the bad thing was is when I talked to these guys, it was out of season for them. They had just a couple blanks left and they didn't have a lot of figure. And so the pieces that I were, I'm turning didn't move that much, right? Uh, and there's not a lot of figure to it. It's kind of ugly looking. If there's a finish on this, it'd look a lot better. If it had the burl, it'd look fantastic. But what was cool about this whole process is, is that they could ship me down to Oklahoma, the wood, and they came up with a very amazing process. So I come home one day and on my porch I've got two big postal boxes and I bring them in and they're heavy as all get out. And I'm thinking, what did they send? Well, they sent me three blanks of wood. And when I open them up, what you would see is it's vacuum sealed. They, and they didn't vacuum seal each blank one time. You know, like the food processor you have at home vacuum seal type thing? They vacuum sealed it two or three times. So these are doubled and triple bagged. And so that's the way that they're able to ship them to you. They cut the blanks green and so they're just completely green. They're full of normal water, just like straight off the tree. And then they vacuum seal them like that. Well, the thing that they advise you to do is once you open it, once you unpack it, if you're not going to turn it immediately, put them in water. So I filled up a big muck bucket with water and brought it into the shop. It was only after I did that that I realized I probably could have brought the muck bucket into the shop empty and then brought a garden hose in and filled it up, which would have been a whole lot easier to do. But anyway, we did the unwrapping and I got everything undone and put it all in the water and let it sit. And I even wound up putting a big rock on it later just to make sure nothing would float, but it turns out the blanks don't float. They're dense. They stay underneath the water. Everything's good, right? So waited a day or two, came out to the shop, and I turned my first blank. And I asked for some advice, and one of the guys told me, make sure you put a little lip on it, because I'll make the wood move. There's not a lot of burl in this, they said, but it still should move. And if you turn it thin enough, it won't crack. Well, here's the first bowl I turned. And you can see, it's not round, right? It's got some angles to it, and I did that little lip thing, but guess what? It did crack. Well, what I found out is there's a difference between thin and really thin. So I made this too thick and then it cracked. So, well, that comes to another part of this story, by the way. Water, buckets, wood, enclosed shop, 100 degree weather, don't mix real well. And, um, well, just watch this little clip of video and you'll find out what happened next. This is what you do when you uh, take a vacation and leave wood and water for a couple of weeks or maybe three or four. I can't really remember, but that is one heck of a science experiment going on there. So I'm going to have to clean this out before I can do my test project. Wish me luck. Yeah. Okay, you can see I changed the water because <laughs> once I got the other blank out that I was going to turn as a test, hey, this is horrible. The only bad thing is you can clear out the water. You can do all you want, but the smell still lingers. And I mean, it's been here a while. But the coolest thing to prove is Madrone, which wants to crack even if you look at it wrong. If you put it in water and leave it in water, you're good. I'm really thinking we're talking 
four weeks to maybe six weeks. When I looked down in there, though, I thought they had cracked and no, they hadn't. It was a little X the guys put on it when they were cutting out the blanks. So that was kind of cool. So this is the thin walled one that I finally turned that is called thin. And you can see by the edge how thin it is. And the little black flecking is in there is actually some of that mold. It started spalting the wood. This does not have a lot of figure, and they told me, they, they apologized, but normally this is just pock full of burls, and it's really, really cool looking stuff. And so, promise me, or promise you, if you do get a blank from them and you want a figured one, they will send you something that will just knock your socks off. And when you turn it, instead of just being oval, oh, well, it'll be, oh, wickedy, and that is really super cool. So, the first step we have to take in this whole journey right now is to get the blank out of the water. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. It only feels bad because there's wet shavings in here right now. <laughs> oh boy, that did stir up the smell a bit. But there, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this blank at all. And so I'm just gonna dab it off a bit because water in your shop doesn't work too well. It will rust things pretty quickly. And at least now I can finally get this bucket out of here. So anyway, there's that little X they made, by the way, when they, uh, marked it. So I'm going to use that as my center on this because I need to drill a hole that's going to accept the worm screw for the chuck jaws. You're going away real soon. And let me come over here and I have a 3 8 inch bit in here. And I already got my famous uh, tape there to mark the depth that I want to go. And so there we go. We're centered. Let's hop this up and we'll drill in. And man, when you're working with wet wood, everything is nice to work with. So there we go. All we have to do now is go mount this on the lathe. I'm gonna use my chuck with my wide jaws on here. And then I'm gonna put inside of that, this worm screw. So I'm just gonna grab, oops, did I tighten it too much? Yeah. <laughs> if you tighten this way down, if you kind of anal about it, you gotta use a wrench to get it started. But there's a speed ring on here which is really nice and it allows you to just do that and the jaws open and close real fast. So anyway, this is the part that goes into the jaws, right? Speed ring that a little bit more. And so it goes in there and you can see how it's gonna fit. So I just leave it loose, come in a bit. Just make sure there's a little play here. If you have that in your jaws, pull it forward and then tighten it down because if it's pushed back, the pressure of putting the blank on there might pull it out while you're turning. So make sure it's pulled out all the way. And then we're just going to take this and it's metal on metal, so you don't have to do a lot to make that get tight. So here we have our nice little wet blank, Oops, excuse me, sandpaper. So now we just bring it up here and you can see the big aggressive threads on here which make this very easy to screw this in and it gets a good bite on wet green wood like that. So now I'm going to lock the headstock in like so, so I can take both hands now and turn this in. And <laughs> I can't tell you, this really smells. <laughs> this wood does not have a great smell to begin with, but once it's had a three or four or five or whatever week bath, it really has a smell. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna unlock the headstock, get that in there, gonna bring the tool rest over here, and I want to upgrade to a bigger tool rest. Oh, one thing, <laughs> where's my mallet? Um, when you're working with wet wood, now this has stainless steel ways on the lathe bed so it won't rust, but everything else kind of gets sticky and gummy and you got to kind of knock it loose. So one thing I recommend, if you're turning green wood before you do it and after you do it, get some WD-40 and spray down everything and just get a nice coating of goo on there so the water will stay away. So here we go. We're going for our big tool rest now. Going to bring that in. <laughs> Keep turning. Here we go. Okay. And I'm going to bring it in here just right about center level. And so get this in place. And we're just going to round the blank out, just make it a cylinder. And so I'm going to grab, I've got it here somewhere. Ah, uh, my, that's not it. I laid it down. We have a bowl gouge somewhere. It has a name on it. And you know, the older you get, the more you forget things. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> I just sharpened this one. That's why I won this one a lot. This is a half inch uh, swept back bowl gouge. And so it's gonna do almost all the cutting on this project. One other tool you want is a face shield because you're gonna need it. <laughs> um, 
Green wood is the funnest stuff to turn, but green wood is wet. That's why Brian's over there. That's why this camera is off to the side too, and I'm gonna be one taking the brunt of it, but I'm gonna stand back as far as I can. Make sure in your shop that whatever you have going back this way is waterproof. That would really help you out a lot. I didn't do that when I did my shop. The other thing is, since that's been soaking in water all this time, it's even wetter than it would be in the wild. So this is gonna be fun. So. Turn that, nothing's hitting. We're just gonna round this out. Turn it on, slow speed. Turn it up a little bit more. And watch this. Blech. That is what you call wet. <laughs> Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust, built to turn wood, enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools, made by a wood turner for wood turners.